Greetings and welcome back. Kamal here and I just got back from a trip to Mordor where I was visiting my boy there Sauron and he even let me forge this integral in the fires of Mount Doom. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Today we have the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x all raised to the phi where phi is of course the golden ratio divided by x dx. And to begin the solution development, we'll do something about this term here, the x divided by 1 minus x term, because it would be nice if this whole thing was just some nice variable like t or something like that without any exponents other than, other than 1, that is. So that's exactly what we'll do. We're going to let x divided by 1 minus x equal t to the 1 by 5. And now I want x in terms of t for the differential element. So we have x equal to t to the 1 by 5 times 1 minus x, which means we have t to the 1 minus 5 minus x times t to the 1 minus 5. And now we'll collect all the x terms on one side so that we have x plus x to the x times t to the 1 by 5 equal to t to the 1 by 5. And this, of course, implies that x equals t to the 1 by 5 divided by 1 plus t to the 1 by 5. And now for the differential element, we'll just differentiate. So we have dx equal to 1 plus t to the 1 by 5 times 1 by 5 times t to the 1 by 5 minus 1 minus t to the 1 by 5. Again, 1 by 5, t to the 1 by 5 minus 1, all divided by... Wait, I need just a little bit of room here. For dt, and we're dividing this by 1 plus t to the 1 by 5, whole thing squared. And now we can factor out 1 by 5 times t to the 1 by 5 minus 1, and that would leave behind 1 plus t to the 1 by 5 minus t to the 1 by 5, divided by 1 plus t to the 1 by 5 squared dt. Some nice cancellation taking place. So our differential element is now 1 by 5 times t to the 1 by 5 minus 1 divided by 1 plus t to the 1 by 5 whole thing squared. Okay, cool. Now what about the differential? Oh, what about the limits of integration? How do they transform? Well, that's pretty easy. We have t in terms of x here. So as x tends to 0, we just have t tending to 0, whereas as x tends to 1 from the left, we have t tending to positive infinity. Okay, cool. So our integral is now 1 from 0 to infinity. The target integral is now i equal to the integral from 0 to infinity. And I probably should have just copied this down. So here we go. Make the visual a lot better. There we go, much better. So we have log 1 plus, this whole thing was t to the 1 by 5. So we're only, le we're only left with t. And we're dividing it by x. x was in terms of t, this whole thing. So we have over here t to the 1 by 5 divided by 1 plus t to the 1 by 5. And, of course, I have the differential element right in front of me. That is 1 by 5 times t to the 1 by 5 minus 1. So we have t to the negative 1 dt. And I forgot the dt up here. Terribly sorry about that. Divided by 1 plus t to the 1 by 5 whole thing squared. So we do have some nice cancellation taking place. And there you go. And this implies that the transformed integral is now the integral from 0 to infinity. 1 by 5 times this integral, that is of log 1 plus t divided by t times 1 plus t to the 1 by 5 dt. Okay, cool. That was fun. But now what? Well, we have a log integral. And log integrals are quite nice when they're being integrated from 0 to 1. In this case, we have an integral from 0 to infinity. But there is a way we can play around with this. We'll write this as 1 by phi times the integral from 0 to 1 plus the integral from 1 to infinity of log 1 plus t divided by t times 1 plus t to the 1 by phi dt. And for this integral, 
will invoke the transformation going from the t realm to the 1 by t realm, which means that dt goes to negative 1 by t squared dt. And of course, the limits turn into 1 to 0. So we have the integral from 1 to 0 of log 1 plus 1 by t, which is very easy to simplify. We'll write this as 1 plus t by t divided by 1 by t times, again, 1 plus t to the 1 by phi divided by t to the 1 by phi. And the differential element is negative 1 by t squared dt. By switching the limits to 0 to 1, we get rid of the extra negative sign. And of course, we have some nice cancellation taking place as well. And this implies that we have log 1 plus t minus log t using the properties of the logarithm. And in the denominator, we have t to the 1 minus 1 by phi times 1 plus t to the 1 by phi. Terribly sorry about that. Uh, again, terribly sorry about that. dt. And now we'll make use of the linearity of the, of the integration operator and write this as two integrals. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 plus t divided by, we have t to the 1 minus 1 by phi. So we could write this as t times 1 plus t to the 1 by phi, and the t to the negative 1 by phi turns into t to the 1 by phi upstairs, dt, minus integral 0 to 1 log t. Same thing over here in the denominator, though. We have 1 minus 1 by phi times 1 plus t to the 1 by phi dt. And this integral is strikingly similar to this integral here, the integral from 0 to 1. Wait, let me copy this down so that it becomes much more clear. So this is the target integral i. And this means we have 1 by phi times <clears throat> integral 0 to 1 of log 1 plus t divided by t times 1 plus t to the 1 by phi dt plus the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 plus t divided by t times 1 plus t to the 1 by phi times t to the 1 by phi dt minus the integral from 0 to 1 of log t divided by t to the 1 minus 1 by phi times 1 plus t to the 1 by phi dt. And now from the first couple of integrals, we make use of the linearity of the integration operator and combine them. And from the integrand, we can factor out log 1 plus t divided by t times 1 plus t to the 1 by phi and in that case, we're left with 1 plus t to the 1 by phi. So we have some wonderful cancellation taking place. And for the second integral, we have integral 0 to 1. Wait, now to make use of the properties of the golden ratio. The golden ratio is that number satisfying the equation phi squared minus phi minus 1 equal to 0. So if I multiply this whole thing by 1 by phi, I get phi minus 1 minus 1 by phi equal to 0. But this implies that 1 by phi is just phi minus 1, which is pretty cool because we can make use of that. We, we can make use of that up here. So we have t to the 1 by phi times log t, and 1 by phi is just phi minus 1. We're left with t downstairs. Of course, this can be compressed into phi minus 2 because I have 1 plus t to the 1 by phi, which is phi minus 1. And now a u substitution is quite clear for this integral. But before we get to it, I need to evaluate this thing here. So we'll call it i sub 1. That is the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 plus t divided by t dt. This is actually a pretty standard integral. All we need to do is make use of the series expansion for the logarithm, where we have log 1 plus t expanded as the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times t to the k divided by k, which is of course valid for the absolute value of t being less than 1. So that means we have the target integral i sub 1 being the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 by t times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times t to the k divided by k dt 
the one by t is of course independent of the index variable k and i'm switching up the operators over here as well to make things quite quick we have the sum over k of negative one to the k wait terribly sorry about that negative one again terribly sorry about that negative one to the k minus one divided by k times the integral from zero to one of t to the k minus one dt very easy to evaluate this is just t to the k divided by k limits are zero and one so all we have is the sum over k of negative one to the k minus one divided by k squared that is which is of course the Dirichlet eta function at the argument being equal to two which is of course pi squared by 12. So all we have to do is evaluate this integral, which is fairly easy. We perform the obvious substitution of letting t to the phi minus 1 equal to u, which implies that phi minus 1 times t to the phi minus 2 dt equals du. And of course we have dt, wait, we have t to the phi minus 1 dt being equal to du divided by phi minus 1. And what about the t variable itself, well, t would be equal to u to the 1 by phi minus 1. Okay, cool. And I seem to be having trouble writing it, so I'll give myself some writing space, and there we go. So how does the integral transform? Well, the limits remain the same, obviously, so that means the target integral i is now 1 by phi times pi squared by 12 minus 1 by phi minus 1 times the integral from 0 to 1 of log u to the 1 by phi minus 1 using the properties of the logarithm that turns into a coefficient. So we have 1 by phi minus 1 squared outside du divided by 1 plus u, which is pretty cool. And to solve this integral, we'll make another substitution here by letting log u equal negative z. So as u tends to zero, we have z tending to infinity. And as u tends to one, we have z tending to zero. And u is supposed to equal e to the negative z. So this implies that du is just e to the negative z dz and the integral transforms into the integral from infinity to zero. Uh, log u is now a negative z. We also have e to the negative z, and we're dividing the whole thing by one plus e to the negative z, dz. But we can also expand using e to the z upstairs and downstairs, giving us, we first up, notice that I missed a negative sign while differentiating so yeah terribly sorry about that i'll just give myself some writing space here's a negative sign here's the extra negative sign that we get rid of by switching up the limits of integration but we still have a negative sign because of the z variable so we have integral zero to infinity of z negative sign outside dz divided by one plus e to the z and this is a pretty standard integration result that I derived a while back, integral 0 to infinity z to the s minus 1 divided by 1 plus e to the z dz equals gamma z times the Riemann zeta function at z. So here we have z to the 2 minus 1, so that means the target integral is in fact equal to negative gamma 2 times zeta 2 zeta 2 being pi squared. Oh, wait, sorry about that. I seem to have gotten results mixed up with a plus sign in the middle. It's actually the Dirichlet eta function, not the zeta function. Terribly sorry about that. So we have the Dirichlet eta function at 2, which is pi squared by 12. So we have negative pi squared by 12 with a couple of saves, which feels pretty good. So we have the required results and now I'm just going to piece everything together. I don't want the phi that's up top. Oh dear me. Finally, I've copied it and I've pasted it like an absolute pro. 
So what do we have? We have i being equal to 1 by phi is just phi minus 1. We have pi squared by 12 here. We have negative 1 by phi minus 1 whole thing squared, negative pi squared by 12. So we factor out the pi squared by 12. That sounds good. So we have pi squared by 12 times phi minus 1 times a bunch of stuff in the parentheses, which on simplification should yield phi minus 1 squared in the denominator. And up top, we have phi minus 1 whole thing squared plus 1, which is quite nice because we have some cancellation. And we have pi squared by 12 times phi squared minus 2 phi plus 1 plus 1, or that's just a plus 2, of course divided by phi minus one. And I don't think we're done just yet because the golden ratio has some really cool properties. We can write two phi as phi plus phi, of course. So we have pi squared by 12 times phi squared minus phi minus phi plus two divided by phi minus one. And we know that phi squared minus phi minus 1 equal to 0, which implies that phi squared minus phi is just equal to 1. So this implies the target integral i is actually just pi squared by 12 times, we got 1 plus 2, that's 3. So we got 3 minus phi divided by phi minus 1 as the final result, a beautiful result connecting both the golden ratio and pi. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. More importantly, I hope you learned something from the video. Do drop me a follow on Instagram, and in case you like the effort I'm putting out, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.